Hello everyone, in this video I'm trying to go over the implementation of the bisection method in MATLAB and understand how that code could be written and how it works. So let's first refresh our memory about the bisection method. So the bisection method was a numerical method to find the root of uh, an equation. So we start with having the uh, several inputs that we need, including the function f itself, a and b, which is the lower and upper bound of the interval we are looking for to find the root inside that interval, an error term, and the number of iteration. So in the bisection method, how the, the way we, it worked was we used a and b, which was the uh, boundary of the interval that is defined by the user as the lower bound and upper bound or the left or right x and then we checked one condition if the value of function f at the lower bound multiplied by the value of the function at the upper bound or the right side was negative that meant the root is actually within this interval and we further break down this interval to a smaller subintervals by looking at the middle point so we look at the, if this condition holds, then we go and have a look at the middle point within this interval, which is xl plus xr divided by 2, right? And then we look at whether this interval is small enough for us, which means that it satisfies our error threshold. If no, then we break down the interval to further sub, in smaller subintervals, and then we continue this process. So maybe it's a good idea to, be, before going over the code, you have a look at the slides in the lecture or watch the recorded lecture again for that bisection method section uh, and then continue with this video if you think uh, you're not yet fully familiar with how the bisection method works. So let's get into the uh, MATLAB code. So this is the MATLAB code that was provided to you. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually uh, describe each section in the code uh, step by step. So I hope, you're, you, I hope you're familiar with some basics of programming, uh, general programming and also programming in MATLAB because that's required to be able to understand how this code actually works. Uh, so having that assumption, um, we start with um, clearing the uh, workspace and the command window here. CLC actually clears the command window, clear, uh, clears the workspace on the right side. So the first part of the code actually gets the input from the user. So we start by getting the function in terms of the variable x from the user. Then we ask the user to input the beginning and end point of the interval a and b. Then we also ask the user to set the stopping criteria for the algorithm or in other words uh, enter the acceptable error and also accept uh, enter the maximum number of iterations uh, that we want to have in the algorithm. In the next section, that's where the actual code starts. So we look at one condition first. We look whether the value of the function f at a, which was the lower bound given by the user, multiplied by the value of function at b, which was also given by the user, is this a smaller than zero or not? If it was a smaller than zero, that means it's a good interval because if, if that's a negative sign, if, the, if, if f a multiply f b has negative sign, that means there is definitely a root in that interval, right? So in this if condition, in this while condition, in this loop, we, ser we, we look for this specific uh, condition. And if f a multiply f b is not a smaller than one, or basically it's equal or greater than zero, that means the chosen interval a and b is not really a good interval because there is no root in it. So that's why the program then sends an error message that says the interval should contain a root, enter a correct interval, and then it asks the user to input a and b again. Then we set a to be the lower bound, we set b to be the upper bound, and then we also set the middle point, how it's going to be calculated. So this is the middle point of that interval. And we also set an error term. Here the error term is defined differently than the way we defined it in the class. In the class it was a relative error that how much uh, the root, the estimated root actually changes uh, iteration by iteration. If the change was a small enough, we would set that as uh, like, an, like a good 
um, uh, or, or sufficient um, accuracy. But here, the error is defined as uh, if the interval that we're looking at is small enough, uh, we set that as the stopping criteria. So here, is, here it only looks at the, the, the length of the interval divided by 2. So again, you can define, you, you can have many different error terms defined here if you like, but here that's what we went with. So the rest of the code actually looks at the um, implementation of the bisection method. So we, again, we need to have a loop, and the loop, what it does, it actually checks the stopping criteria. So what were our stopping criteria? If the error term is uh, should be a smaller than the uh, maximum error that we defined, and also the number of iterations should be um, a smaller than the maximum number of iterations. So if so, that means while the error term is larger than the error, that means continue this loop, continue the bisection method while the error term is large, or uh, as long as uh, the actually not or but and this is, means and and the number of iterations is smaller than the maximum number of iterations. Well, we also have another condition that keeps going with the bisection method, and that is if the root is, uh, um, if we actually the value of the function at x at any iteration is rough, is not equal to zero. So that means this is not equal. The sign means not equal. So that means x shouldn't be the root, otherwise we have to stop, we already, we already found the root. So we start with finding, so as long as these conditions uh, hold, that means we're good to continue iteration by iteration. So we look at the middle point of the boundary, we set the lower bound as a temporary, we set the middle point to be the lower bound, and then we check the first condition. If the lower bound, if the value of the function at lower bound multiplied by the value of the function at the upper bound is greater than zero, that means that um, um, interval, that interval that is chosen, doesn't really have uh, uh, the root in it, right? Because this is positive. So what we do is we set the lower bound to be the temporary value, and we set the upper bound to be the middle point of that interval. And then we check if the value of the function at the lower bound is equal to zero, that means Great, you just found the root. You're lucky. The lower bound is the root. So we set the error to be zero, and then we actually get out of the program, or we set uh, i equal to i plus one, going to the next iteration, which basically goes all the way, ba way back to this while loop, and then because fxi is, uh, is now equal to zero, uh, this loop doesn't continue, and then we come out of the program. Same thing also goes if the value of the function at the upper bound is zero, that means you are lucky, you already found the root. So then you set the error to be zero and then it results in coming out of the loop. But if uh, none of these conditions hold that you are not lucky, you, the lower bound and upper bound is not actually the root, the way we continue is we, we calculate the error term and then we look at the new subinterval. So if the error term is not a small enough, that means we go all the way back up here, and then we look at the middle point of the interval, and then we continue. So this is basically the, 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 the MATLAB version of the implementation of bisection method. Um, and when this loop satisfies, that means you actually found the root, and then uh, the root gets printed here, and then it also shows you the number of iterations that require to actually find the root. So now let's run this and let's see what we get. So I'm going to run this. So here it says enter the function in terms of the variable x. So let me do maybe exponential of x minus 1. Enter the beginning point. Maybe I do minus 10. Enter the ending point plus 10. Enter the acceptable error term, maybe I do um, 0 0.01. And maximum number of iterations, let me do 500. It actually couldn't find any root. Probably the function that I defined 
was ill-defined. So let me try another function. Um, probably I can do x power 3 uh, minus x power 2 plus 2x plus 5. The, enter the beginning point. I do probably minus 10. End point, let's do 10. Enter an acceptable error, 0 0.0. Iteration, let's do 100 this time. And there you go. This time, um, I definitely knew this one has a root. And we can see from the result that the root is actually minus 1.1113. We found the root in 11 iterations. And this is how the error value changes as the number of iterations goes forward and also the value of the estimated root as the number of iterations goes forward. And now let's change the uh, boundary, the A and B, for this function again. Uh, and let's run it again. So I want to run this again. I use the same function. And now this time I do 0 and maybe 100 or maybe 10. Uh, same error level, maximum number of iterations. It says, look, the interval should contain root. So the interval 0 to 10 was not really containing any root. So the program is asking me to actually update my uh, interval. So I do again 0, and this time I put 100. Still not a good interval. Probably doesn't have a root on the uh, positive side. So let's do um, minus 20 as the beginning and probably minus 10 still not a good um, interval let's do minus 10 and minus 5 still not a good one uh, how about minus 1 and 0 still not good one minus 100 and 100 yep you see we got to the same root uh, roughly because it's approximation but in a longer t in a longer number of iterations why because now my interval was very big. So you can give that a try with different functions with different intervals A and B and see how the code actually performs. So I hope this was useful for those of you who didn't really have a chance to go over the code in details in the computer lab. And uh, again, just like any programming practice, this requires your effort. Go over the code, have a look at the code in details line by line, run it, try, try different functions, try different intervals, and see uh, how it works. Thank you and good luck.